Hello everybody, um, today we're looking at a game played in 2015 at the South African Open. And this is played between our South African IM, Watu Kubisi, and Shabir Hussein Bawudian. And actually we've looked at two of his son's games on this channel before. Uh, the one game against Rubertu, where they managed to get four queens on the board. And then the other game against Matt Pon, which is just a crazy game in its own right. But uh, like father, like son, they say. So this game is going to be interesting. And we have knight of 396, d4. And then um, a, a Benoni. So this transposes into a type of Benoni, d5. And now e6. Uh, if uh, Bawudian wanted to, he could have gone b5. And then we would have had something like the Benko Gambit. Uh, let's say c4 and then g6. Uh, this would have been like the gam ben Benko Gambit. A bit more aggressive, but e6 also um, positional and s a very solid line. And now Watu doesn't go for c4, which could uh, just walk into something like this. Kind of like what happened in the game. But he keeps uh, the c pawn on the board by going knight c3. And uh, now after d6, e4, and this trades, uh, the position uh, is kind of solid for both sides. And it's consolidated. There are no more really big tricky things happening in this opening. They just need to develop. So... A4, castles, A6, bishop E2, B6, knight E2. And actually, Watu brings his knight to a nice square on E3, where it's just covering this uh, D5 pawn. So a bit of maneuvering and a uh, nice outpost for that knight. Now we have a uh, rookie 8 uh, by, by Woodian, and it's actually a novelty. This hasn't been seen before immediately. But let's say, for instance, knight G6, F4, rookie 8. These are the types of moves to happen in the position and he's just playing it maybe just in a different uh, order. That was my initial thought but uh, after rook e8 and f4 I thought okay maybe in just knight uh, g6 now. But in fact he plays knight ed7. So maybe some different ideas in mind with this uh, rook coming to e8. Definitely clearing out that f8 square for the bishop. Uh, but definitely knight g6 would have been a stronger option. One of the main reasons being that f5 and you simply just go back. Uh, with your knight to e5 which is a nice outpost for that knight and um, if a stronger move like bishop d3 maybe he was afraid of this um, you can go h6 and even though this trade uh, could happen your king can find a safe place on h7 and that's not even to say bishop d3 will happen uh, as i was saying f5 just simply knight e5 uh, you can also just uh, after bishop d3 i think you can just go bishop f8 and keeping options open to capture either way. So not completely sure why knight ed7 in the game. Um, but in, in any case, uh, now it's actually this is quite a tricky middle game position. Okay, so it's in this position that Watu really needs to be accurate. He goes bishop f3 with the idea of playing g4. And uh, then there isn't the square for the knight on e4 anymore. And he needs to go h6 and knight h7. So you've provoked the pawn out. But in fact, it's a bit stronger to force this bishop to go to f8 immediately. And one way of doing that is to go g4. Uh, because now bishop f8 is simply uh, your best option uh, for consolidating the king side. If uh, h6, then you can simply play uh, h4. And you're forcing this bishop to f8 again. And now g5, uh, knight e4. There might be this this tempo in a really one of these deep lines uh, in the position. Uh, and then rook e8. Uh, but this is just the very small inaccuracy. One of the main points about the timing of bishop f3 is so that the bishop isn't on e7 so that you can push h4. And uh, for instance, after going bishop f3 immediately, uh, if uh, Bawudian didn't go bishop f8 himself immediately, um, if he had just gone h6, now we can see how awkward it is to actually push this pawn uh, to h4 if Bawudian had gone knight h7. But in any case, these they, they both kind of uh, missed the small nuance and they ended up with a position very much the same as the most accurate line would have been for white. So uh, luckily for Watu. We have h6, h4, and um, now play on the queen side by Bawudian, d5, trades, and just play with tempo so that you can start your attack on the king side. And now g5. Um, g5 actually wasn't necessary to play immediately uh, he could have gone for the pawn 
uh, on b5, it's hanging, so nothing wrong with having gone for this pawn. Maybe he was just scared his timing would be a bit out, but uh, you can go through these lines. There's nothing too scary about going uh, knight b4. If knight centralizes itself, uh, there are quite a few things you can still do and possibilities for playing this position. So uh, this it's a full pawn. Um, you, could have you could have taken it because now, in fact, the position becomes very sharp after he had gone g5, but William finds the move b4. And, okay, you really don't want to go for this knight trade that Bowdoin is suggesting because he's calculated, actually, to this very nice line uh, that really just seems to suit him. If you're trying to get out of the way, black can do the same. And, in fact, it, it becomes uh, tricky for white because this h-pawn is hanging. And it's uh, actually now white that has pushed his pawns up the board and overexposed himself. So, after b4, just simply knight e2 by watu and uh, the g5 pawn is traded. And now knight, knight h7. Um, this knight does end up on h7 in the end. And uh, we have b3. In fact, uh, b3 just stops advances on the queen side and prepares to, ah, oh, sorry, fiancé to the bishop on the dark square diagonal. Uh, I like one of these two moves instead of b3, actually. Uh, king g2 or king f2, actually. I like the king on f2. Just making room for the rook on the h file for now. Um, and... There isn't really an attack on this king, and the king is actually quite a good defensive piece uh, on this file, so I like this move. In any case, we have b3 preparing this attack, but now the position becomes pretty sharp. Bishop b7, queen d3, uh, putting some weight uh, onto this diagonal, and now stuff like this is going to come pretty quickly. So g6, shutting that down, and bishop b2, this was Watu's idea in the end. Uh, to provoke this and to uh, get the diet sorry get the diagonal in the end um, but actually king f2 uh, was the only honest way to play for an advantage in the position if you're a computer and playing against a supercomputer you give up the diagonal it's the idea and then you go queen b5 try play on the queen side and then rook h1 uh, one of the main points uh, we'll get to why this would have been a better idea not going for this file at all um, is that uh, the g5 pawn is weak in white's camp so king f2 definitely uh playing for advantage in a different sense but okay bishop b2 is a is a mistake and it would have been interesting if um but wouldn't have taken the pawn uh, because now we walk into uh, this line where okay you need to step out of the check where bishop a6 a is actually a very strong move trying to remove the defender of the e3 knight and okay it walks into kind of a forced draw you need to take that piece and now simply just this uh, perpetual. You need to step back. And obviously, okay, that's, that's a draw. If, for instance, uh, you don't want to take, uh, sorry, after bishop a6, you don't want to go take this bishop. And you want to go queen d2 to hold on to everything. Now you actually have quite a lot of problems after bishop, bishop h6. And you can kind of get the sense that, okay, white is now overloaded. Um, and also, this can be a tactic. The king is very exposed. So, um, the idea of bishop a6 was seen, but in a different order now. Just, he plays bishop a6 immediately. Um, and Watu could have actually just taken the bishop now. And after giving up this piece on e3, gone king f2, my favorite move of the game, putting your king on f2. And after rook e8, knight g3, uh, queen e7. The king is actually pretty safe. And white's queen manages to get back into... Uh, the queen side via uh, the king side via the queen side it's actually pretty cool i uh, just queen takes d6 and very deep lines but okay what to go c4 he doesn't take the, the bishop and on passant is possible uh but also possible is knight takes g5 yet again giving up the piece like this and playing against this very exposed king uh, also definitely an option uh, but just on passant, and here's what is idea. Queen takes c3, threatening mate on h8. So you need to play with tempo now. We have, sorry, so uh, after queen takes c3, uh, we have knight e5. Sorry, that move just comes very quickly. <laughs> I think it's a mistake every time I see it, but it's actually uh, one of the best moves here. In fact, you could go f6, and this is very tricky because now uh, you're trying, you're defending the mate threat uh, through going f6, but now uh, white is actually going to come in onto this diagonal. And this is black's biggest threat. So if white plays very accurately, you could try it like this, rook a1. And um, 
Black's way of keeping the bishop off of this square for now is let's just say bishop g4 immediately. Black can take here and just waste a bit of time. So white, instead of going for a position where the rook is still here, he could actually go rook a1 immediately. Uh, sorry, rook a1 immediately. Uh, pressure this bishop and force it to capture. And now you've got a similar position, but you're still going g4, uh, e6. And it becomes tricky for black to defend. Let's say queen e7, bishop g4 is actually still a big threat, even though you get to trade. Uh, this position, uh, where the king is uh, very weak on these diagonals, isn't good for black. So after rook a1, um, okay, and then just uh, bishop takes e2. Uh, bishop g7 seems to be a good find, but still very tricky for black to defend. Therefore, but we didn't give us up a piece, knight e5. Uh, it's kind of necessary. Uh, now you could just take this piece, uh, but bishop g7 seems to be pretty good defense. So instead of that, um, after knight e5, what just adds more pressure, knight g4. And okay, uh, th this doesn't really work because the pressure here remains. I went through a few lines, so I'm just, I want to get to the end game now. This is the interesting part. So we have bishop g7, an accurate find. We have f takes e5, and now queen takes g5. Apparently keeping the queens on the board would have been a stronger idea. Uh, because white's king is so exposed, there aren't any pawns around. Black is okay playing down a piece. In any case, after queen takes, queen c1 to trade off queens. Uh, yet again, bishop c1 instead uh, would have been stronger, realizing that black really doesn't need to trade on queens. But I'm actually guessing they, they're getting into time trouble now, so thinking the end game would be a place to consolidate this game in. So rook takes c1, d takes e5, and black goes into this end game um, down a minor piece. Uh, e4, actually he should have taken this knight, and after bishop d5 check, king f8 uh, isn't great. You need to go king h8. This is the reason why white is giving up peace. Um, king f8, the, one of the main points is that rook takes c5 and this diagonal opens. The seventh is weak and um, lots of outposts for this knight. So white gives up uh, a piece like this. So he simply plays d6 to open up some play for his minor pieces. Uh, and we have e4 just shutting down and trying to trade on this dark squared bishop, which does happen. And now rook takes c5. And actually, here Bowdoin could have just taken the piece. Uh, going e takes f3 was perfectly fine. And uh, if he's afraid of this passed pawn, it's actually quite okay. He can go king f8, and after d7, rook d8. Uh, the, one of the main ideas is to uh, give up the piece just for this pawn, and then uh, play play against the two knights somehow, so with the other pawn. So let's say rook a7, king e6, you can try and just sack a piece like this and apparently black will be fine. Um, in any case, rook d8 allows white to some play on the seventh rank. And this is how I know they were down on, <laughs> down on time here and it was very tactical. We have king, uh, king h8 here and um, actually, yeah, uh, the move knight e5 Oh, sorry, here's the moment. After knight g5, I realized that Watu was in time trouble. He just went bishop takes e4. While knight takes g6 check was a way more obvious move. Um, with one of the points being, you need to see knight takes f5 with this big checkmate threat. And black can't really do a lot. Uh, the pawn is also coming to d7. And this time it's going to come through. So, uh, this is how I knew they were in time trouble. So... Uh, instead of that, what you took this pawn on e4, uh, trying to get black rid of some of black's pawns. And okay, now we have rook takes d6 and bishop c2. And this is actually a moment where black has consolidated the position. He can go, um, he can go rook e6 now. Uh, just defend this pawn for now and try going f4 and then getting the knight in. And this would actually give him some play. Uh, instead, uh, he, he went uh, knight h3 check immediately, and now king g2, knight g5, and once he makes some progress, brings the king up, um, goes to e3. Uh, one of the main points is that, okay, you'll, you'll see now there is a uh, fork on board. If he went to f4 immediately, black can play this fork, picking up the rook, but white has got the same one picking up the rook again, so it's a way to transpose into that endgame. But what he plays until f4 waits until f4 is played, forcing him to go for this, uh, therefore getting rid of one of the pawns again. And after this trade, uh, to actually reach this endgame where what is actually up one minor piece, um, 
and it feels like this should be a draw, but um, actually not. You can force off the other one for the pawn, then pick up the pawn and play three minor pieces against one. Kind of that's his idea. So let's just see how he plays. So first of all, there's a lot of maneuvering. And this is done low on time, and he actually plays really accurately, which is very, very impressive. Uh, there's no sacking the knight even for the spawn, because that is white's idea. Uh, so simply knight d5. And uh, they actually play quite a while here. It takes a while for white to get the spawn off the board through all of the checks. And king c8. Um, and now, okay, well, these pawn moves are coming too quickly. And the knight will help the pawn queen, so black gives up that pawn. And here's kind of the theory now. White maneuvers all the way back. And now tra trades down that bishop, but there isn't much to do in any case. Uh, white will make progress. And this is actually what to, in his um, peak here, uh, just mating with the bishop and knight. And this is actually uh, quite a nice way he does it. Because first of all, black ran to the dark squared corner uh, where white can't checkmate so you need to get him out of there first and what his technique is flawless and I, I quite like how he mates with the bishop and knight he just actually keeps the king on on uh, the eighth and drags him to that corner very quickly um, no no issues and not letting the king out he doesn't use the big triangle small triangle he just goes with the king to the other corner and the checkmate actually comes pretty quickly king a8 Bishop f5, no 50 move rule problems, just knight a6 check, king a8, bishop e4 checkmate. A brilliant game by both players going into a super, super sharp middle game and playing an, an end game, um, what to with lots of flair and definitely there was time trouble involved. Um, I enjoyed the game a lot, I hope you did too and please remember to subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with more South African chess players games and leave your um, suggestions of games in the comment section, I will definitely look at them. Um, thank you for watching. Bye.